I've also done, there's, all together there's 78 cards in the tarot. Okay. And there's smaller cards, um, there are also smaller paintings that mm -hmm. I've done, so I've done a bunch of them. Oh, minor like the, the, too. the minor yeah, cards? Yeah, okay. the minor, the court cards are mm -hmm. about three feet high, and then the minor arcana is like two feet high, something like that. They're okay. And um, I just haven't worked on those little ones in a while, so I'm right. trying to finish the big ones. Right. And um, and I do, I make it, I have a deck, you know, that I've made. Okay. Yeah. So are these, are the, the paintings all a deck? That you've created and then you're making the paintings or are you using uh -huh. a previous deck? To, um, to... No, I'm creating my own. I've invented my own deck. Okay. Yeah, definitely. I re I've been researching tarot and each card as I go. Some of them I've just really taken artistic license. Like the hangman is, looks nothing like the original hangman, mm -hmm. but the meaning behind it um, is definitely mm -hmm. conducive to the hangman. Um, uh, do you know of any other artists or people that have done something like this? Um, yeah, there's, I know, well, I haven't met them, actually, mm, sure. <laughs> but I know there's other painters in Seattle that have created tarot deck. I know mm. the Halloween tarot is created by somebody, and that's actually a published deck. Oh, okay. By somebody in Seattle, and she has some paintings hanging at Gargoyle Statuary, which okay. I sell out of my prints there. I have, like, oh. prints on sale there. Okay. I make prints, and um, I also sell a limited edition tarot deck. Oh. So. I should be holding in my hands right now. <laughs> and uh, I sell it on my website. People, oh, great. And people all over the world, I mean, are buying it. It's funny. And then when, as I, as I finish each card, mm -hmm. I send people, everybody in the, who's bought a card I keep track of, I, mm -hmm. I send them the newest card so they keep adding to the deck. Oh. So I call it a tarot deck in progress. Right. And join me on my journey. It's like right. a journey. And right, then right, like, right. people are like emailing me going, when's the next card coming? I can't wait. Right. How long do you think it's going to take you to complete? complete the deck? Um, well, since I'm almost done with the major arcana, which is right. kind of the biggest part, mm -hmm. um, I could, you know, I think maybe in two years I could finish it. The okay. smaller ones go a lot faster. Sure. Um, the big ones have been really intense, and the major arcana itself is very intense. Mm -hmm. It's There are archetypes, big archetypes each, and so working on it, it's just, you know, like, I'll be like experiencing the deck, the deck in my life, the mm -hmm. card in my life. Oh wow! Yeah, it's bizarre. Mm -hmm. Um, so and so experiencing the tarot through the major concept of painting it is just a major life experience. And wow! I, you know, yeah. I would say anybody, if you're interested in tarot, try to you know do your own deck because it'll make you grow and right. your life will go in all these interesting directions. Mm -hmm. it, so you were saying earlier that with you know your research of creating the deck that you became a reader yourself yeah yeah so do you do that for people yes i work at um echo elements it's a uh, environmental bookstore type of thing in um pike place market oh yeah and they sell like candles and incense mm -hmm. and they've been around for like almost 20 years mm -hmm. and you feel like you're really helping people it's right almost in a way it's psychology the tarot mm -hmm. you know these events are happening in your life and this is what I see happening. It's not fortune telling like a lot of people think. Mm -hmm. It's more like saying, "Oh, this is where you're going in your life. These are the influences coming in, and mm -hmm. this is how to deal with it." And it, it brings up the good parts, the bad parts, you know, things that you need to look at. Mm -hmm. And it's been really amazing how it helps people. So it makes me feel good too, like I'm helping. Right, right. And I'm working with tarot, which I love. Right. Do you know? Um, can you share us some of the history of the tarot deck? How it came about, or what you know of it. Well, yeah. the tarot, the oldest known deck is from the 1400s, mm -hmm. from Tarot Marseille, um, and that's you know, ancient woodcuts, and, but they think it could be older than that. They're right. not even sure where the origins are from. It's very interesting, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. um, and it kind of pops up all over the world, the tarot, and the elements in the tarot, the four elements, mm -hmm. you know, earth, air, water. Earth, air, water. Is what it's like. Right. Um, and it's and it's based on like a regular playing cards. Mm -hmm. So, but the major con has been taken out of the you know regular playing card mm -hmm. deck, okay. except for the Joker. The Joker okay. is like the fool. <laughs> right. Um, so they say that the tarot is basically was hidden knowledge in a game, or it was like knowledge okay. that you could carry with you in symbols, and it had to be hidden because of you know all the religious persecutions and stuff going on and like the dark ages and mm -hmm. all that you had to hide this hidden knowledge and you know to this day I mean there's people that think tarot is 
evil and they need to burn it, you know? Right. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, and it's actually just, it just shows a lifetime, your life, the, the life of the soul and mm -hmm. all the experiences people go through and, um, and how to help yourself and how to look, you know, it's how to raise your consciousness. It's, um, it's just amazing. Mm -hmm. It's a very helpful tool. It's nothing evil at all. Right. Then do you get people from all walks of life or? Oh yeah. Certain, yeah. I get, you know, I get mostly people that are very serious about, they want to question because we charge, it's $30 for 15 minutes mm -hmm. and an hour is a hundred dollars. So mm -hmm. there's not going to be people coming in there who are like, I don't believe in yeah. Carol. Give me a read, you know? <laughs> right, right. They're not going to pay She'd that give kind of, they're not yeah. going to pay that kind of money. No. So it's only people that are serious mm -hmm. that really need help yeah. that come in and want some answers mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and it's been great. Do you find mm -hmm. that you get repeat people coming back to you? Oh yeah. Mm. Yeah. I have repeat clients. Mm. Um, definitely. Cool. And, you know, but when, you started, what was your idea about creating this this series? Were you already kind of into the tarot or something? Yeah, you... I was into okay. the tarot. Um, I was, you know, and it's over the years people had given me decks as gifts, like out oh. of the blue. Uh -huh. It's kind of interesting. My hmm. my parents had tarot decks, oh, too, interesting. And, uh, in the 70s, and my mm -hmm. dad had a deck. And I remember my mom saying, that's... Papa's tarot deck, don't play with it. Oh. And I really wanted to play with it because I could see it was pictures. Oh, we're right. allowed to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's mine now. My dad gave it to me. Oh, that's so. sweet. Yeah. yeah. So, um, how do you feel about being an artist living in Seattle? I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think Seattle is a really creative place, and especially for doing inner work, a lot of inner work. Um, like the tarot is based on inner work, inner mm -hmm. images, and creating your own symbols that you don't see anywhere else. Like, I'm not using old basic symbols from other decks. I'm mm -hmm. creating my own symbols that are popping up. I just feel like the energy here is definitely, you know, creates things that never were there before, or it's just very interesting energy here. Mm -hmm. Art that comes out of here seems to explode all over the world. Mm -hmm. Every time it comes, something happens, it just, it's mm -hmm. all over. So, so it's a do great you, place. Do you feel like you can make a well, you kind of are, but you don't make a living as an artist and living in Seattle as well as to go to New York or L.A. Yeah, I don't feel a pull to go mm -hmm. to New York or L.A. Like, mm -hmm. I have to be in the scene, you know? Right. Like, New York. A, lot, a lot of my friends that I went to Cornish with are in New York, mm -hmm. and I think it's great. You know, they're like, yeah, you could come here. There's a place for your art here, you know? I'm like, you know, I love Seattle, and, and to me, it's, my life is more than living in the city trying to get to my art, you know? I, I don't want to be here. I like to be that by the ocean, mm -hmm. this is where I grew up, the woods. Right. Um, you know, we have a baby now, right. so I want want her to raise her in a good, healthy environment. And you know, right. there's more to life than just than just my painting. Right. Uh, and I know that it doesn't matter where I live that mm -hmm. I'll be able to create wherever I'm living. It doesn't right. matter. But right. So why not live where you really want to? Yeah. I use a golden tarot, <laughs> which is a uh, old icon pictures ca um, collage together. Um, really interesting deck, and it's totally works it's for me. So, um, and I'll, I've also used a Crowley deck a lot. I learned on that one, and the Rider Waite. Those are two really tried and true decks. Mm -hmm. um, which is, I had the, I was using their Universal Waite because it's prettier. Mm -hmm. But then I was thinking, wait a minute, they messed around with the colors here. Oh, that's a good thing. But Rider Wake is, is great because she was the first one to illustrate the Minor Arcana. Before then, it was only, you know, they only showed like four swords or four cups. So, but since she did that, everybody who's made a deck after that goes to the Rider Wake deck and uses her interpretations of the Minor Arcana and just kind of does her interpretation. Mm -hmm. My whole thing is to.